I love in Exodus. When Moses was all by himself, I love when Moses turned to God and he said, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Because wherever you go, I wanna go. And wherever you move, I wanna move right along with you. Moses, you used to pitch his tent and say, God, show up right here where you at. So as we, we sing that song, Alpha and Omega, and we have an understanding that he's the God of the beginning and he's the God of your end. But what I love about the fact is that God can sit in the beginning and God can sit in the end and God can meet you right in the middle, right where you are. So it doesn't matter where you got. God, show up in my heart right now. Show up in the disappointment right now. Show up in the frustration right now, God. Show me your glory because you are Alpha and Omega. We serve a God that sits in your in-between. So while you're stretching towards the future, believing for the more, please understand you have a father that sits with you here, and you have a father that sits in your future. You have a father that's preparing the very thing that he has for you to release it right into your hands. Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you, we thank you that you are Alpha and Omega in this place, Lord God. That you are the beginning and you are the end, Lord God, but you sit right where we are. Sit on our hearts this morning. Sit on our minds this morning, Lord God. Sit right between our thoughts. Rest on our hearts. For the one that needs peace, Lord God, Release the peace today for the one that needs the hope today. We ask that you begin to release a hope. Your word says that you give peace that surpasses all understanding. So Father God, you are Alpha and Omega. And when we don't even understand what the end may look like, we understand that you will give a peace that surpasses our understanding. Let us rest in your presence today, Lord God. Well, anybody believe that today? Anybody believe that today? You can stay standing, family. I want to I get into this word. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Acts 12, verses 1 and 5. Can we just put our hands together for our worship team again? That was... I'm going to be reading from New King James Version. Come on, family. Chapter, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. It'll be on the screen for you as well. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews... He proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people at the Passover. Verse 5 says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Oh, I, I don't think you heard me today. Let me, let me read that again, family, and hopefully you get it a second time. Peter was in prison. Peter was bound, but, but I love the comma and I love the but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. If I can preach this message today, family, come on, we, we getting ready to go in, but if you're taking notes, please just say this with me today, family. 
when the church prays. Come on, say it again. Turn to your neighbor this morning, family. When the church prays. Come on, you can go ahead and have your seats. Come on. When the church prays. Come on. The supernatural begins to happen. Come on, family. When the church prays, come on, your breakthrough begins to shift in your lives. Come on, is anybody in here this morning? When the church prays, come on, just begin to think about your life and thank God for a church. Can we begin to put our hands together for God's bride today? That despite what you may be going through, somebody is praying for you right now. You would not be where you are right now if it wasn't for the church. Come on, family. Come on, we just need to praise God for his church. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss C students for our middle and high school. Your, your wonderful leaders are right there. Are you ready for the word, family? Are you ready for the word, family? Come on. Did your team lose last week? Is that it, family? Just let me know. Just be honest. Come on. Just be honest, family. Something powerful happens when the church prays. Something powerful begins to shift in your life when the church prays. See, here's the beautiful thing about prayer. And I I know some people say, well, Pastor Anthony, prayer is powerful. Matter of fact, I can can stay at home and just pray all by myself. I don't even have to go to church. I can stay home and pray and and sit with God right in my PJs. Come on. Hopefully online family, I'm going to get to you. You may be in your PJs, but it's okay. I'm going to back you up. I got you. But but what I still, what I love the understanding is here that the more we read scriptures, family, it, it, it is not how we gather or it's not even when we gather. Rather, it's where we gather, family. It's when we begin to come together, there's something powerful about the corporate prayer. That you can be a soloist all by yourself and talk to God. You can have a wonderful relationship all by yourself. And I know y'all pray some beautiful prayers. Come on. I know heaven just flows down. Come on. It's just beautiful. You got an angelic praise. Come on, just tell you now, I have an angelic praise. And just because how wonderful you pray, hear me today, family. There's something special about the corporate prayer. There's something special about when, 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 when a family of God begins to come together and, and have a one accord. I love it in Acts family. Come on, somebody. In Acts 2, it says that they were in one place. Come on, somebody. They were in one place, in one mind, in one sound, on one accord, and there was something special that was released because the family of God decided to come together and lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. So you, we can do this all by ourselves, but I just believe this, family. What Scripture teaches me is that there's something powerful that happens just designed just for you when the corporate pray, pay people begin to come together. See, see, you can have a whole lot of different personalities. Come on. You can have your alter ego. Anybody got an alter ego in here? Come on. I see a couple of hands going up. Despite how, many, despite how many personalities you have, you are still one person. You are still one person. And hear me today, in order to have agreement, you have got to have somebody else to come alongside it with you. The one thing about agreement, what we learned in the Bible, you can't just agree by yourself. You need people to come alongside of you to walk in agreement with you. The very thing that you could be struggling with, the very thing that you could be waiting for, have you come into agreement with somebody else so that now you can begin to see God move in your life? Have you just been praying some solo prayers in this season? See, I, what God is sharing with me more, family, that, hey, P- Pastor Anthony, maybe God is waiting to shift some things in your life when you begin to allow the church to put his hands on it, when you begin to allow the church to speak over it, when you begin to allow the church to pray for it. The wonderful thing I love about this church, Pastor Brenner lifted up the connect card and hear me today, family, it's just not a piece of paper. You are part of a church that believes in prayer. You are a part of a staff that believes in prayer. You are a part of a team that believes in prayer that when we begin to lift up the name of, of Jesus, he begins to move on your behalf. It is just not a piece of paper. Every Thursday, the staff comes together and we pray for a move of God. 
We pray that God will begin to touch. We do this, why? Through the power of agreement. See, I love it here in Matthew, Matthew's 18, verse 19 through 20. It says, it's this family. It says, again, I say to you, that is two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. See, see, just underline that word, agree. See, see, I, what I love about here in agree, actually in, in the Greek, it actually means symphonia. And this is where we get symphony. See, if I can take you back, I'm a Washingtonian. Come on, Pastor Brent, we're we, we some Washingtonians. What, what I love about growing up here in the DMV area is being a kid all the way up to a door, taking field trips to the Kennedy Center. What, what, what I love about going to the Kennedy Center, the, the first play that I ever got to witness was the Nutcracker around Christmas time. And what I love about the Nutcracker is that they have a symphony, they have an orchestra, they have, they have all of these instruments that begin to come together to make a beautiful sound. I know nothing about music. I can't begin to break it down. I would have to get Pastor Chris to come back up here and tell you the different elements that they have in a symphony. But what I do know about a symphony, that despite the different instruments, they're playing one sound over here. They're playing one sound over there. But when they begin to come together, it releases a beautiful music. It begins to release a beautiful, a beautiful sound. And here's the beautiful thing. Despite how much I love a saxophone, I love a soloist saxophone. That soloist saxophone cannot be a part of a, be part of a symphony if it has a solo by itself. Here's what I'm saying, family. Have you been praying solo prayers in this season of your life? Have you been just walking by yourself? And here's the beautiful, what I want to share with you is that God is saying, you're part of the symphony. You're part of the, the, the beautiful music that's supposed to be released to God. And God is saying, join in with the symphony, join in with the crowd, because maybe you've been praying or maybe you've been playing that solo is too long. And God is saying, join in and make a beautiful sound towards heaven, because here's the beautiful thing. If we're just praying by ourselves, we're missing half of our prayer life. There's some powerful things that happens when we join in with the church and pray. There's some powerful things happen when we begin to come to God and come around, come around the family and say, hey, you know what? I'm going through this. Pray for me. I'm struggling with this. Pray for me. You know, when my family is going through something, pray for me just by yourself. I'm learning more that you can't win this battle by yourself. You got to join in with some intercessors so that the power of God can begin to release in your life. God is saying, I don't want to have you walk, walking in this season too long. Just begin to join in with the symphony and release the sound. That's, that's a beautiful thing about a Sunday morning. Is that now we're just not coming in here by ourselves and you're sitting in your own row by yourself, but you're joining in with the symphony, whether you're in person or whether you're online, you're, you're joining in with the symphony and we're releasing a beautiful sound to heaven. See, my, 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 my question to you to, today, my friend, what kind of sound are you releasing to God in this season of your life? It, it, is it playing a beautiful melody towards God? Because here's what Jesus said when two or three are gathered in my name. Agreement is release. Agreement is release. And here's the powerful thing about agreement. When agreement is released in your life, the supernatural is released in your life. The blessing is released in your life, fam. And I wrote this down in my notes. What's in my life right now that's bound because it hasn't been touched by the power of a praying church. Peter was locked up. Peter was under arrest. Peter was facing a sentence with death, seeing him that he was getting ready to actually walk and be murdered. But I love that it said, but the, but the church. I love that it said, but constant prayer. I love that despite the pressure that Peter was going through, there was a church that was praying for him. So you can be bound right now in your thoughts. 
You could be bound right now in your vision of what God is getting ready to do next. You can be in a season of your life. Is there anybody in here this morning that understands I've been in a season of feeling bound that I can't catch a next thought, that I can't, I can't process what my next is going to look like, that I don't understand, God, this pain that I'm feeling right now, despite what Peter was going through, the church was still praying for him. Could it be that God is saying we begin to come together in corporate prayer and come together together in corporate prayer that there's a church that's waiting to pray for you? That there's somebody that's waiting to love on you? That there's somebody that has the same shoes that you are walking in right now. Somebody has already walked in those shoes and somebody has already gone that road and somebody's already overcame that obstacle and God has your blessing sitting right in his room right now and God is saying, I just need you to be open and I just need you to begin to come to my altar and begin to cry out because there's something powerful happens when the church prays. See, I wrote this down in my notes. Things begin to change when the church prays. Depression can't stay around when the church prays. Come on, come on. Breakthrough happens when the church prays. Come on, the healing that you're waiting on can begin to shift in your life when the church prays. Doors begin to open up in your life when the church begins to pray. And here's my, and here's my challenge to you today, family. Are we part of a church that prays? Come on. Are you in a house of a church that believes in the move of God? Are you part of a church that believes that God can touch you despite where you are, despite what you're going through? In a hopeless situation, if God is still on a throne and, and Jesus is still on a throne, God can still move in your life. If God can, if Jesus can raise somebody from the dead, he can raise your hopeless situation. If you've been going through some stuff, I'm just here to tell you, as long as we still cry out to God, even in a hopeless situation, Jesus can touch your life. He can move in your life. You're never in a hopeless situation as long as Jesus is still reigning in your life. And I'm just here to say, as we lift up our hands and we cry out to God, despite what the enemy has been whispering to you, your God is still moving in your life. Is there anybody in here today? That believes in a move of God. That believes even when you're back against the wall, I'm still crying out to my father. That I still believe in his promises, that his promises say that he will never leave you or forsake you. That he will always be there with you. This is the God that we're praying to. This is the heavenly father that's in your life. I want to say it this way, family, and I'm going to move on, but please understand you serve the God of the impossible you serve the God of the impossible. You need to look at your situation right now and say, I serve the God of the impossible. You need to go connect with somebody at the church today and remind them, despite where you may be going through, you serve the God of the impossible. That he can touch that situation. He can move in your life. Despite being bound, Peter still had a praying church. Peter was set free because of a butt church, a butt church. See, we live in a society right now that loves to throw what the world is going through. That what, 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 what I love in this family, and hear my heart on today, hear my heart on today, despite pressure, it actually sets the stage up for God's church to move. Despite oppression, it actually sets the stage up for the church to move in your life. When we look at throughout all of the early Christian church here in Acts, despite persecution and despite what was going on, I love the fact that the church still grew because God took the persecution, God took the pressure, and he actually turned it into power. God can use what you're going through for power and fuel for what he's getting ready to take you. The church was supposed to stop, but the church grew because God turned what was against them into their good. Can you begin to change your perspective of what God is doing in the midst of your season right now? 
Could, could it actually be? I, I, I love this scripture right here that even in James 1 and 2, it says that this family, James said, count it all joy. Come on, somebody. My brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, matter of fact, start rejoicing when persecution comes in your life because it sets the stage up for God to be all God by himself. That when that miracle that's getting ready to happen, there's nobody else that you can say that did it. You can't say that your wisdom got you out of this. You can't say that your strategies made a move. That God is getting ready to move in your life right now that you know that it was him all by himself. That what God is setting you up, he's setting the stage up. Wherever there is pressure, it sets the stage for God to use his church. If you're taking notes, my first point is this, family. When the church prays, miracles are birthed. When the church prays, miracles are birthed. Acts 12, 6 and 7 reads this, family. When Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Just put yourself in Peter's shoes. Put your situation in Peter's shoes right now. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. But I want to go a little bit deeper because in verse 11, it it gives us the reason why what was once holding him down now has to let go. It, It lets me know that despite the chains that were on him, because there's a, a, a group of people who decided to lift up the name of Jesus, a group of people who decided to devote themselves. It was a, a group of people who decided, to, and instead of seeking something else, they actually resorted to prayer first. It was a, a group of people who decided to pray. Verse 11 says this, family, and when Peter had come to himself, he came to himself, he, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angels and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathering, gathered together, praying. There were some people praying while Peter was locked up. I love that their first resort was prayer. See, understand this, fam. Now, I, 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 might, I might step on some toes real, real quick, but we, we will always be a church that will resort to praying first, regardless of what's going on in society. See, even, even with certain leaders, I, 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 can I be a little bit transparent? Sometimes we're so quick to post stuff on social media before we're quick to actually go pray. They were so quick to put stuff out in the a, in a atmosphere when God, our first responsibility as a church is what, family? To go pray. Regardless of what you're going to, go pray. Go seek the king about what's going on instead of trying to influence the, 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 the social media congregation. Can we come together as a family and begin to pray together <laughs> and begin to seek God on what he's going to do? Sometimes we're looking to influence people that we don't even know online, but God has a power sitting right in this room right now. And God is saying, if I can just get my church to come together, instead of jumping on social media, if I can get my church to come together in agreement and begin to lift up the name, those chains that's on that merge is getting ready to get broken. Those chains that's on that mind is getting ready to get free. That person who's walking in depression won't be in depression no more if the church would decide to come together and pray. We seek a lot of other options before we actually seek the one who actually has the solution to break free the very thing that you're walking to. Miracles are being released in your life. Hear me today, family, because your church is praying for you. Your church is devoted to pray for you. This is why, this is why, we, we, this is why I love that groups are going live today. Come on, shout out groups. 
If you haven't drawn a group yet, please go join a group. Why? Because your miracle is sitting right in the midst of a group. Give it a test ride. Test it out. If you don't like the leader and the leader's weird, I get it, family. Give it a couple weeks and see how it goes. I may be the leader and I may be the weird leader. Just test driving and see how it, how it goes. Why? Because you need to come alongside of some people and stop praying soloist prayers and come together and share what God is getting ready to do in your life. I'm telling you, family, I've been sharing this with the staff. In this season, it is time to pray some bold prayers. It is time to pray some dangerous prayers. It is time to, to step out onto the edge with God and say, God, blow my mind. It is time to believe that God, I really believe this family, that the level of your prayers, uh, the level of your prayers is the level of which you, you believe how God can move in your life. If you see your God as a big God, you pray bold prayers. If you know that your God can move in your life an unbelievable amount, you pray those type of prayers. But if you believe your God is small, you'll always pray safe prayers. You'll always pray prayers that you can do. You'll always pray prayers that if it doesn't happen, I'll be okay. But God in this season, family, here, even for this church, here's what I believe what God is saying. God is saying, Anthony, it is time to elevate your prayers. It is time to take your prayers to another level that God is getting ready to blow your mind. If you read this story a little bit more, it's not even in my notes, but go down and read it. They were in the middle of praying for Peter and Peter the blessing showed up at their door. That you could be in the middle of praying for God and asking God to move in your life and while you're in the middle of praying for it, your blessing is sitting on the other side of the door. It'll meet you right. That's how quick your father can move. He don't have to wait a season. He don't have to wait five years. He's not bound to time. If he wants to move right now, he'll move right now. If he wants to move in a year, he'll move in a year. Your father is not bound by anything. So keep praying because it can show up on the other side of your door. To the point that they didn't even, she didn't even believe him. She had a double check. We're praying for you. How are you right here? How are you showing up? Matter of fact, she ran back and told the others. They didn't even believe it. They didn't even believe. In this season, I believe that God is getting ready to blow your mind at unbelievable heights. To the point where you go tell other people, they won't even believe. I told you last week, and God is bringing it back up. Get ready to pray some crazy prayers. Get ready to pray some prayers with some crazy expectations. That when you tell people your prayers, I'm praying that they look at you crazy. That's my prayer for you this week. That you're running to some people who were questioning your prayers of what God is getting ready to do in your life. And when they question you, just like I said last week, oh, you're in the right place. I'm in the right place with God. Because why? When the church prays, miracles are birthed it. You are part of a church that prays. Point number two, when the church prays, God goes above and beyond. Ephesians 3.20 says it this way, family. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond, anybody believe it today, all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, family, we serve a God who has a desire to go above and beyond in your life. That the prayers that you're praying, God can oversee that. Believe that the prayers that you're believing for God to move in your life, that God is looking to actually go higher than that. That God is actually looking to take you to a level. I, I said it already, but I want to I wanna say it again, and I want to read it from my notes because the level of your expectation of who your God is is always shown in the boldness of your prayer. So now, if your faith in God is small, you will always pray small prayers. But if your faith in God is big, you will always pray some dangerous prayers. And in this season, God is looking to go above and beyond. And he's looking for his church to stop praying some dangerous prayers. Because God is saying, I can't even go above that. That dangerous prayer that you're praying right now, God is saying, I can actually go above that. I can actually go beyond that. 
I can actually do it more supernatural that, that you can even think or even bring into your mind that God wants to oversee what you're doing. And we have to make sure that we're in a position with God. Hear my heart on today, family, to stay with bent knees and pray to a heavenly father that can go above the very thing that you need in this season. The very thing that you're waiting for, only God can do. Don't the very thing that you're waiting for the breakthrough, only God can do. But here's your help today. Here's, here's the blessing that you need today. You don't have to pray by yourself. That you can actually join in agreement. And he says, I'm standing right in the midst with you. So you can bring your pain and your problem and you can bring everything that you're going through and you can join in with others. And guess what? Right in the midst of your pain, God is saying, I'm right there in the midst of it too. And when he's in the midst, come on, family, breakthroughs there. When he's in the midst, come on, pain can't stay around. Is anybody in here today? When he's in the room with you, I'm telling you, depression can't live where God puts his feet at. When he's in the room, anxiety has to flee. So this is what we do, family. When anxiety and, and depression comes and, and overwhelming and overthinking comes, hey, here's what we do, family. We invite God into the room. Because when God is into the room and we make space for him, the thing that doesn't belong in your life has to leave. It has to flee. It, 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 it has, why? Because your God has the power this is the beauty of a praying church. God can go above. Let me give you my, my last point. You still with me, family? You still with me? Let me give you my third point. I'm going to invite the team back up. But I love this third point. When the church prays, the church increases. When the church prays, the church increases. Watch this, family. Acts 12, 24 it says, but the word of God spread and multiplied. Let, let, me, let me read it again. But the word of God spread and multiplied. I want to I, I make sure I teach this right. I want to make sure because understand what was at the threat of the church during this time. That you read about King Herod. Herod. And understand that the Herod, this is not the same Herod that actually tried to kill baby Jesus when he, was, uh, when he was a baby. This is actually the grandson. This is actually that he's still part of the family that's still trying to stop a move of God. Don't you know, if you don't know this today, don't you know the enemy will constantly try to attack you when you are a threat to what he's trying to stop? Don't you know that the enemy will actually, he had his grandfather now, even now in the early church, he's sending his grandson to stop a move of God. But the church increased. But the church increased. Why, why did the church increase? I, I love this. Wherever God's presence is in your life, the principle of increase will always be applied. Hear that today, family. But wherever the word of God is in your life, the principle of increase will always be applied. L let, me, let me teach you a little bit more because even in Genesis, come on, family. He created Adam. He created Eve and he told on what family to go and multiply and be fruitful. This is the principle of increase, not because of them, but because of who he is. And he was telling Adam and Eve, you're going to be able to be fruitful and multiply, not because of what you're getting ready to do, but because I'm right here with you. Wherever I am, increase will always be applied. If I can give a little bit more, watch, watch Jesus. This is, this is Jesus here. Jesus said, matter of fact, in John, he said, I am the vine. Come on. You are the branch. You cannot do anything apart from me, but with me. Come on. Is anybody here today? But, 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 but with me, there's increase. But, but with me, there's, there's power. With, with, with me, there's overcoming. With, with me, as long as you do it with me, I'll give the increase. We find ourselves right here in Acts. The early Christian church. 
so much persecution going on. In the house and out of the house. So much going on. We see from Acts 2 all the way through that his word kept going forward. Despite the pain, the church grew. Despite the persecution, his word was was, uh, released. Despite everything that was going on, I love that it says and it keeps reminding us that the enemy can never stop a move of God. And God has a move on your life right now. So wherever you may find yourself, understand, apply the word of God. Wherever you may be going through right now, I invite God into the situation. That if you don't see what the end could be, invite and begin to pray with somebody. We're getting ready to go back into prayer up here and we're going to have our altar team begin to pray with somebody because his word says where there's two or three in an agreement, I am in the midst and maybe God is waiting for you to invite him into the midst and the one way, the one principle, the one method of how Jesus told us that we can constantly invite him into the midst is through prayer in agreement, in agreement. You can stand to your feet, family. Can we continue to be a church that pray together? Can we continue to be a church that lifts up the name of Jesus? Because I wanna close, family, before we go back into worship. I said it again, I'm gonna say it again. Something powerful happens when the church prays. What's the one thing that you need God to move in your life right now? What's the one thing that you, that you haven't figured out the solution? Maybe you feel stuck. Maybe you, maybe you lost all hope. And maybe God is saying, I hear you, my sister. I hear you, my brother. Invite somebody else into the midst. That that, that you can't walk by yourself in this. Because the powerful thing about agreement is that his word says that if one can put a flight, a thousand down, then two can put 10,000 down. That math doesn't, doesn't make sense, God. Here's why the math doesn't make sense. It's because the principle of increase was applied. When we invite God into the mess through prayer, the principle of increase is applied. I wanna, pr- I wanna pray this over you, Proverbs 13, 12. Hear this today, family. It'll be on the screen. It says, hope delayed makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Maybe you're in here today or maybe online and God is saying that you lost hope. You don't pray about it anymore. You don't think about it anymore. You, you're just giving up hope. That's who I want to speak to right now. You're just giving up hope. We don't talk about it. We don't dream about it. And just like last week, here's what God is reminding you again. God is saying, just give me your desire. Just give me your desire for better. Just give me your desire for more. That you've, you, you've given up on having a desire for that situation. And I really do believe God is reminding you, even in this moment right now, don't even worry about how the outcome can come. Just give me your desire and I'll blow your mind. I'll blow your mind. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for your word even on today. We thank you that your church, when it prays, things begin to happen. That things begin to shift in our life. 
So first, Father, we say thank you for inviting us into this church, a church that believes of the, the power of God, a church that believes in praying dangerous prayers, a, pray, a church that believes in, in the Holy Spirit moving in our life. We ask that you reign in this place even right now, Lord God. Where we're feeling hopeless, we thank you that we're part of a community that doesn't give up hope, that leans into prayer and believes that God can always move. We invite you into this space. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to go back into worship, family, I, I, I want to invite our altar team right up here. If you're part of our praying team, you can begin to make your ways. And as the team is shifting up here, if that's you today, or if, I, if you're part of our key team as well, come on up and as we get ready to go back into prayer, if God is speaking, here's one way to respond, family. Hear my heart. Here's one way to respond today. Pray about it. Amen? Amen? Pray about it. Now is the time when we continue to worship God through the offering of our tithes. I would like to ask the ushers to please come forward as we prepare our offering. I would like to read Matthew 6, 33, and it reads, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Let's pray over the offering. God, I thank you for giving me a seed, Father, making me to, causing me to be a sower, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that we have a good heart, Father, to want to sow into the kingdom of God and partner with you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that we have good ground to sow into, Lord. I thank you, Father, for all the partnerships that we have within the schools, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for the partnerships within the shelters and the community, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that we will continue to be able to, to sow into the children's ministry, Lord and to see it expand, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing, Lord God, in us and through us, Father. I pray, Lord God, that this offering will be holy, Father, and acceptable unto you, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have given us, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for trusting us with it, Lord. It is in Jesus' name I pray, amen. They don't usually give me a mic, so this is interesting. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Just some quick announcements, church. So yes, today groups are live. So excited about that. I'm so glad. I think I signed up that Pastor Anthony mentioned that because I yes. signed up for the group and I said, well, I didn't get an email yet, but <laughs> it makes sense because it's not live yet, Shamina. So thank you for that. But yes, so this is where you get to find community, yeah. friends. This is where we get to get together. And the thing that I love most about our church is that we are for Jesus. There is never going to be a doubt about that. We are fun. We are funny. And but when it comes to the things of the Lord, we don't play about that. Right. And so if you want to come and have real genuine community, we have a dinner, right? Yes, so it's like we have we dinner do. groups, fire set, uh, fireside chat groups. Yes. Uh, Miss Kenya over there, we have women's, men's group. I think the brunch group, if they pray, the yes, calories brunch. don't count. I'm not sure <laughs> about that, but in my mind, uh, my chicken and waffles are blessed and less calories. So um, yes, and we also obviously have have study groups um, where you're there and you're um, in the word online as well. We have QR codes. You just zoom your, your camera in right there. That'll be wonderful so you can sign up. And then worship night at David's Tent DC. Woo! Worship night. Yes, worship night. So I just feel like it's the beginning of the week. You know, you have school, well, except it's Monday, but I feel like you just got taught something. And what dawned on me is, this is the test. So, 
what is worship night? Okay, so worship night is September 30th, this Friday at 7 p.m. Celebration Church is going to be partnering with New Life Church at Davis Tent, D.C. And that is an opportunity. This is my point. This is the test. You just sat here and you heard the preaching. You heard the man of God. You heard the teaching. What happens when a church prays? This is it. This is when you show up and see what happens on this Friday. How convenient, how on time was that, that we get to come together with our voices. And it reminded me of one of my favorite scriptures, um, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Come on, church. If not us, then who? We get to come out in D.C., lift our voices, praise and pray to bless this land where decisions are being made for the entire nation here in the heart of D.C. That is a privilege. Can we get excited about that, please? That is a privilege and an awesome blessing. And so we love to see each and every uh, one of you come out for this special occasion where we're joining together to lift up the name of God. Again, QR code, it'll take you right there. We hope to see you there, family. Hope to see you there. Let's pray out. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance upon you and give you peace. It is in Jesus' name that I pray, God, that you protect every household in this place, Lord God. Protect their going and their coming, Father. Cover them in Jesus' name with perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your week. Hope to see you in the groups and at David's tent.